Hello, I'm Nari McDiamond for MiningNews.net and I'd like to welcome Graham Arvidson, the Chief Executive of Australian Vanadium. Now, Graham, obviously there's a bit of a clue in the name, but can you provide an outline of what the company is all about? Thanks, Nari. Yeah, just in a in a brief synopsis, the Australian Vanadium Company is developing our, our namesake project, the Australian Vanadium Project. We're really excited about that because we are at a really advanced point. We do expect to be the world's next primary vanadium producer. We've got a well-developed asset, and importantly, it's a tier one asset. And what that means is there's a 25-year mine life and a low operating cost outcome where we will be a lowest quartile producer when we get into production. So we're seeking to develop a tier one asset and link it to what is increasingly exciting, which is the vanadium flow battery thematic, which is an important, well-commercialized technologies that's going to enable countries like Australia and others to uh, decarbonize as we seek our 2050 targets. And so we we will do that by mining vanadium uh, near Mikathera. We will then truck uh, concentrate uh, to uh, a processing plant near Geraldton, where we intend to produce some of the highest purity uh, vanadium pentoxide in the world, which is a perfect precursor uh, and one step away from going into vanadium flow batteries. Um, following that, we do uh, intend to, and in fact, we're building and and uh, commissioning an electrolyte facility here in Perth that'll be commissioned by November this year, wherein we can take those vanadium oxides and convert them into the final product that can go into these batteries. So you've got quite a lot happening on several fronts there, Graham. So if we could take a little bit of a closer look at your flagship project, what are the key highlights for you there? Yeah, look, it's um, the reason this uh, project is so good and why I feel uh, such a great privilege to work here is it's a it ultimately a low cost product producing asset and it has scale. The reason it will be a low cost producer is because we have an ore body there where the geology has essentially a very thick, very consistent uh, seam of magnetite that is uh, containing vanadium. And we can then very efficiently in an open pit, simple open pit process, uh, mine that magnetite and concentrate it up cost effectively. Uh, the other exciting bit of our project is we've uh, created this hub processing concept where we can uh, transport that concentrate to the coast, uh, use a proven uh, standard flow sheet uh, to then convert um, that concentrate into vanadium oxides, you know, of the very highest quality. But we can also then by processing near the coast, we can export an iron ore byproduct. So um, we're really excited. What this does uh, essentially is make us uh, one of the lowest cost producers in the world and will be um, ideally positioned uh, to provide new supply into the growing demand from flow batteries into the future. Well, speaking of flow batteries, Graham, I've heard you also talk about the pit to battery strategy. So if we look at the battery end of it briefly, can you elaborate a bit more on what you've called your VSUN company? Sure. Uh, Vsun's a 100% owned subsidiary of AVL. It's it's a really exciting business. We've uh, we've had it up and running for about three years now. And what Vsun started out as is taking uh, flow batteries, which is a 20, 30 year old technology, and really uh, working with end users to ensure they understand that with the growing thematic of long duration stationary storage in particular, that these batteries batteries have a really truly unique technical advantage, but also now an economic advantage. So Vsun's working with a, a number of providers across Australia. Uh, most recently, as an example, we signed an agreement with Horizon Power here in Western Australia, where we will uh, sell to and then supply and install uh, a vanadium flow battery for use in their network, um, uh, for which uh, Horizon Power is quite excited as using as a prototype to understand where else they can apply these flow batteries in their network. So again, why now uh, vSUN is there? Because this is that turning point where long duration as in four, six, eight, 10 and 12 hour storage in grid applications is becoming absolutely critical to this renewables transition. And these flow batteries are ideally poised to supply that solution. And you know, just quickly running through why we're excited about flow batteries. They 
they will last 20 to 25 years with virtually no degradation, which in, in our estimation, there really isn't any other battery technologies on the planet that will have that uh, level of robustness in, in a grid application. And when you uh, look at cost of storage across 20 year horizons, and you think about four, six, eight, and 12 hour storage durations where you're shifting energy, renewable energy, um, you're actually looking at now a highly economic solution that is a better fit technically. So, and last but not least, we like to highlight that these flow batteries compared to a lot of the other technologies out there are highly recyclable, as in you can economically and with very simple technology take most of the value of that battery and remove it, recycle it and reapply it either in new batteries, or you could even take the vanadium out of the flow battery and put it into steel or other applications. So we're really excited that, you know, where we're trying to create a vertically integrated pit to battery solution, we can provide homegrown vanadium here in Australia. We can supply into that industry and we create a highly economic, technically beneficial and recyclable technology that fits perfectly with uh, what energy providers are, are grappling with in terms of long duration storage. Well, Graeme, if we take a slight step back to look at the leadership team at Australian Vanadium, and I must take this opportunity to congratulate you on your nomination for the Emerging Leader, Leader Award with MiningNews.net, but can you elaborate a little about who is at the helm of the company? Sure. Um, yeah, firstly, thanks. I'm, I'm very humbled to be nominated for that award. Um, the only reason I am nominated is I've had a bunch of very important mentors in my life who've shown me what good leadership looks like, and I have tried my best to emulate their um, strong values. Um, and speaking of leadership on our team, so one of those people who've uh, been a, uh, someone in my life who I look up to and I hope um, live up to in terms of his uh, leadership standards would be Daniel Harris. He's been in the vanadium industry for many decades, uh, has run the largest vanadium companies in the world, but more importantly, is a really wonderful human being and taught me what leader, good leadership looks like. Um, he's a non-executive director on the board. The chair of the company, Cliff Lawrenson, I think uh, needs no introduction, but is a huge asset to our business, believes deeply in what we're doing and will help us integrate with the energy industry for which he has a really credentialed career uh, at the helm of uh, large companies there and currently chairing uh, other uh, energy focused um, businesses. So he provides a lot of support and uh, mentoring to myself and really brings that broad market competency that will allow us to continue to grow. The rest of the board, I can't say highly enough how um, wonderful it is to have a curated board with the right skills. So very quickly, Peter Watson, another non-executive director is known for being at the pointy end of projects like ours and successfully navigating the uh, run-up to financial investment decisions and then successfully uh, building assets in, in the difficult cycle of these projects, uh, taking it from FID into production and making all those transitions elegantly. So I'm very fortunate to have him on the board as someone who can coach me and keep me between the guide rails on how to develop these projects. Um, and then we recently appointed also Miriam Stanborough, again, probably needs no introduction and sits on the boards of some of the biggest success stories here in Perth, but on a more uh, basic level, she is just a wonderful human being, one of the most empathetic people I've had the privilege of working with and has uh, well, a credentialed career as a chemical engineer, so fully understands the business proposition that we're trying to do here, but brings deep uh, competency in lots of other things, including stakeholder management and just how to be, again, a good leader in business. Um, very recently, we've appointed Anna Sudlow to the board, and she uh, really fills the, the gap that we may have had in terms of um, financial acumen, but not to um, belittle the rest of what she does, which is just a really competent, deeply um, empathetic human being as well. So we just have this incredible board of competency, not just in vanadium, but all the skill sets that I think we'll need to be successful where we're at, which is a near shovel ready asset who is going to embark on a path uh, uh, towards production. Myself, just very quickly, my background is almost entirely uh, mining industry, uh, building and operating assets, um, anywhere from mine sites through to downstream processing. And most recently, I spent most of my time in nickel, uh, the last five years in lithium, 
And uh, prior to that, in a previous life, I actually was a production manager in a vanadium refinery. So I do uh, hope that uh, my skill set as an engineer, mineral economist, and just general business acumen is a good fit. But I believe I need to surround myself with other people who fill the, the gaps that I don't fill. Uh, those would be um, Todd Richardson, our chief operating officer, uh, 30 years in the vanadium industry and one of the most respected people in that industry, uh, certainly by me. And he's been stewarding the development of this asset for the last um four years to make sure that the study phases were done with absolute precision and competency that gives me faith that we're embarking on a good journey going forward. Uh, Todd's competency is one of the reasons I'm at this business. Um, across, we recently were able to attract um, Tom Plant as our chief financial officer. And Tom brings uh, deep competency in mining, uh, having spent 11 years with Aluka Resources in senior roles. And he also uh, has a background in banking with Macquarie Bank. So he brings this deep competency in developing infrastructure, which is a nice um, skill addition in, in terms of this vertical integration into infrastructure that we're, we're proposing to do. We have a nice, I, I could talk forever. Honestly, we are so blessed with a wonderful team of competent, technical and other good people. I hope that's a good summary. I think I'm taking too much time now. So thank you. Well, Graham, before we go, uh, if we could get you to summarise the elevator pitch, if you will, what final thoughts would you like to leave with a potential investor? Um, I'd like investors um, who are perhaps unfamiliar with vanadium to uh, think about what happened in lithium um, about seven years ago. Uh, as someone who was very fortunate to be involved deeply across many uh, lithium operations through that phase of the last seven years, uh, I think it was not obvious at the time what was happening. Um, there are so many parallels in the vanadium industry um, that would indicate vanadium demand uh, having um, less than three years ago being only 2% of the market to now being 10 uh, we're at this hockey stick point and think through what, why might that be and where might it go? And the answer really is why might that be is long duration storage where other battery technologies uh, are either in short supply or just really not the right fit. And this is a highly commercialized, many decades old technology that has really found its place. Uh, that's why we're seeing an uptick in demand. And then why, why Australian vanadium then is because uh, we have the most advanced, uh, one of the most advanced vanadium projects in the world. Um, we have a team of vanadium experts here. Uh, and I think, um, not to be understated, we have the right values and the competency on our board that we uh, intend to grow a really uh, world-leading vanadium business here. Um, and we have, uh, thankfully, uh, the endowment of a wonderful uh, asset being uh, the Australian Vanadium Project, 25-year mine life, has all the hallmarks of being a lowest quartile cost producer. And we're really advanced on financing, offtake, and permitting uh, that places us as, as a near-term producer. So I'd encourage investors to look deeply at what we're doing, think about where the Vanadium market's going, and probably I would hope they can conclude uh, following um, looking at some Australian Vanadium presentations that we are indeed poised to be the next, world's next primary producer and a low-cost producer. Well, Graham, thank you very much for taking the time to have a chat today. Much appreciated. Thank you for your time.